Hello, I'm Penelope Maver, and welcome back to Earth Converse Podcast, where we explore our relationship and conversations with the Earth, all in the hope of inspiring a deeper connection with ourselves, each other, and the Earth that is our home. And yesterday was Valentine's, and today I've got a Valentine, Maria Alvarez. And she, we, and um, uh, we met again. This is this beautiful group from the Living and Dying. Yeah. But her partner Felix and and Maria and I had we there was a little we had a little group in terms of working together. So I feel really connected in this yeah this beautiful butterfly. And I just and uh, we're just talking about just in terms of opening the space. And she said she's a she feels a guardian of space. Isn't that a beautiful thing to say? So welcome, welcome, my love. Oh, thank you so much, Penelope. I couldn't have wished, as I told you before, for a better first ever podcast, uh, having your wonderful questions and poetry uh, guiding us to this uh, lovely podcast that you're doing. It's wonderful to see you again <laughs> and to be with you here. So I love it. <laughs> I'm excited. <laughs> Let's. <laughs> so where do we start? What's flowing through? Um, yeah, we can we can start. Um, you know, like when I prepared myself here, I realized that I would take care a lot of the space um, that surrounds me to prepare myself. Like maybe it was even the ritual to really enter this space even if it is a virtual one and I have been witnessing so many online congresses and seminars and I'm doing seminars myself and I'm always this curious one like what's in the back of the people um, so what details do they have what do those details tell about them so I'm always this um, it's it's in myself as well like I'm, I'm kind of relating and researching like what how's the atmosphere around this person I'm that's something that makes me very curious so I al also put something in the back of me so you know I would feel settled and having candles and lighten the energy and it was so nice to see that you also have uh, a background around you the spiral and details like a photo colors that might tell even a story you know <laughs> that's the thing isn't it like my um, brother-in-law calls me a uh, Spartan Penelope, which in terms of not a, as a warrior, but actually I don't have many things. Like I just, I am kind of sort of a minimalist, but it looks yeah. like quite a bit. But yeah, every object has a story, hasn't it? You know, and just that, that connection. And um, yeah, and also, you know, I think the same thing, your sense of beauty and, and um, sense of... Um, I don't know connectedness like I feel like even when you went like that you're like so some sort of ancestors are supporting you or something there's something a bigger you're in a bigger sphere what is behind you so that lovely picture going like this what's yeah where are you there is that you yes um this was uh, when we have been to Mexico actually and we have been uh, on a lagoon and Finally, you know, a lagoon where nobody else, actually just me and my partner, my wonderful Felix <laughs> and I, uh, um, stranded and just, just could be there. It was very lovely. So I would be there like embracing all of this, being even naked and yeah, mm -hmm. just in nature and also this tropical, tropical nature. There was um, a lot of um, flowers and uh, wood and I just really got every day I got more into it and I really could relax like in the end like really being somewhere where you yeah so mm -hmm. I I really love this because it, it reminds me to that I actually wish every day and even more to just expand myself and just having living this kind of state like every day this is what I wish for me I'm very sensitive so it's not always that my surrounding will tell me yeah you actually you know like just expand yourself and uh, be relaxed but uh, I'm really on this I really want this I feel like 
you know, or after a Lomi Lomi massage or something that I once got, I the first time I felt like, oh, this is how I can feel in my body. So I feel like, why shouldn't I feel like every day like this? So this is a reminder, like, yeah, um, I want to do so. Yeah, and just you once again this yeah this literally this expansiveness and I think in terms of um, this intention which is relates to space isn't it like what is my intention and where how do I want to live my life and what's my question and in, into that so, so who is Maria and who is she becoming <laughs> Wow a big question I have been journeying on all all those years um, I'd say Maria right now is kind of a reborn Maria um, let's say this um, springing here on earth was a big salto I did and um, in the big I'm now 39 so um, in the beginning of my 30s I felt like my soul kind of connected more to this place where we are and I um, I feel that the, the last years have been, there have been so much um, uh, development, personal one. So I encountered every time more my, my inner nature. Before that, I have been traveling a lot also in the world. I wanted to connect um, to my father as well, because I haven't grown up with him. So he um, lives in Cuba again, and I would travel sometimes to this island to meet him and to meet all of my uh, paternal lineage, you know. But there was also this curious interest for me to, to um, when I was in Latin America, I had the chance to be there at um, different times. Um, and so I, in search of my own identity, I was always searching about humans where who have been those humans who have uh, came first um, to this land so I was always going to the museums and talking to people I was very interested so I wanted to land on this part of the earth and I guess and also um, what brought me back to my own nature more and more was the fact that I started um, to um, to becoming more a she like um, I wouldn't I have understood that female in English always cons um, has this relation to a male so I wanted to use this she um, so in the last years also I, I connected very much in groups only of women and um, um, encountering like who I was in, in a big bigger community of women and um, this was my search here and I also then would encounter very fast the world of birth um, I um, I started a formation as a doula as a soul birth doula so what incarnates here so I was becoming very interested I'm, and I'm still in this incarnation is also I like the word very much it's really getting into who you are mm -hmm. and I feel that I'm in a big landing still landing but this first big salto in the beginning of my life, maybe being a bit pushed pushed away from who I was and having to adapt a lot uh, into the family I was born in, um, I encountered my sensibility more and more in the beginning of my 30s and and then my my being would like coming out again. And I feel of all the work I have been doing in the last years as well, now I'm, I realized I'm standing, you know, I'm strong strong enough and soft enough and pff, now here I am and now little by little where I am now is that I feel you know the last year for all of us it has been <laughs> a big threshold I mean there were so <laughs> many and I also have incarnated a bit more into myself and I really would um, work the earth inside of me out, you know, like really, okay, what's, how do, what do I really need? What are my uh, basic needs? And really taking very much care of this, which I feel is a necessity we all have in this time now. And now my earth has been, I have been grounding myself more. And now I feel the earth is a bit more 
more fert it's becoming fertile now i can feel that there is a movement like we are on the embolic time now and mm -hmm. i feel impulses that are coming to me and i would i would just follow them i would listen or you know like this wish to to really stand with with all that i am outside and also providing the way i see the world or the perspective or i have um just providing it um yeah i feel like i'm i'm doing this movement right now yeah, and it's still a very soft one as well so i love that soft and strong and this sort of both rootedness like like it's like that picture behind you you know this very sort of rooted on the earth and then this expansiveness yeah yeah Mm. And even the water, the embolic, <laughs> yeah, and the flow, and the, you, and that flow, and that emergence. What was it at like your early thirties that had this journey? Was it going to Cuba? What was it? I mean, was there any sort of particular moment that you came back in terms of in yourself this in reincarnation? <laughs> it's interesting, and uh, maybe. It just works out one thing after the other. So when I was 29, which comes into my mind now, is that I traveled again after seven years to meet my father. And I had a very much questions inside of me still uh, from my inner child that wanted to be responded. And But in this travel, it was kind of different because when I saw him, I would just feel like, oh, he's my dad. I love him. He would always love me, but I was full of a lot of questions so when we met this time then we just made our connection clear you know like we love each other it's a very profound connection uh, we are related so I had now had I had my back you know I could even feel it in my back like now I'm sorted out my mom my father me our relation you know like each one has his or her own relation and I'm fine I have my relation to my father and to my mother. So maybe this was one thing, but then I was always in the search of orientation still. I um, I was with a lot of questions of identity. And um, so in the beginning of my thirties, I would from time to time, I would go to a community and uh, learn there as well. And um, my soul actually after well yeah how can i say that mm. it showed in my relations um to to a partner also um that something wasn't working out the way i wished to that i had some ideas of how i would be in a relation or what i wanted but then this ended up in a kind of crisis you know like really asking myself like and trying to figure out. And then this time, um, yeah, my soul was really longing as well. I remember a very special moment. And and then from this moment on, from now six years before, a lot of new cycles started, but I will just tell that because I, it was coming into my mind as well as I was thinking of today. Um, I was in this um, community and then I felt like alone also and i felt like i really wanted to call in people i can relate to from my soul like I, I needed like also having a community or just nearby people so uh and i did this maybe crazy thing my mind would say maybe it's crazy but it felt so right i was on the side of a, of a small river and um i don't know maybe there was some wind or something and then i just allowed myself to to really howl, like howl this oh. a sound wow. into the atmosphere, expressing all the longing for connection very strongly. Like, and I repeated that and I could really feel that kind of energy channel was like opening and because I did it really loud and it was very strong. So I might have been heard because <laughs> <laughs> I might have been heard. <laughs> Just some time later, you know, I would meet also Felix there in, at this place. Yeah. 
And um, I mean, who knows, but who could it know? But a lot of cycles then started. And he would always be this um, mirror in a lot of ways. He, uh, he sees very clear. And so I would take also this challenge to grow, really grow on the side of, of a partner. But yeah, at the same time, he would be my, my soulmate as well. Like having an island with another soul that we feel very um, close and can understand a lot of things in our lives. So I kind of landed in this, I call it, yeah, the, the, the home of, of my soul. Like, so this gave me more earth down my feet and um, to develop and to, to continue my journey of, of healing as well and finding out and expressing my truth. And yeah, I think this might be some of the aspects. Oh my goodness, I love the, you know, in terms of how, like the deep longing, you know, the pit of your stomach. Yeah. And it just feeling so right in that, in that moment to do it. You wouldn't have even thought about doing it, just really calling out. Yeah. Wow. And then the universe responding. And then this, yeah, this, well, what, you know, when you, what is it when you meet your 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 soulmate? Like the, the the responsibility of that, or you know, like oh, hold on, actually, the universe did give me what I want. Like, I guess for me, it's like there can be various souls that you can have a strong connection. It must not be the one. Still, maybe it is only one or a few which you can decide to live with to continue together you know like i i believe it's like that and for that yeah for that journey right <laughs> i love you know like soulmate I, I remember eat pray love did you read that um, i saw the movie <laughs> and i love the movie <laughs> the girl, but, but she tells about you know that soulmate is the one you want to be with and then this other guy who and i think it was um, a friend Richard going no it's not the soulmate you want the soulmate you want to that's the person that comes wakes you up and has to leave you know because it's too painful for you know it's not right it's they do the work they you know they put you into another cycle or a re reincarnation and then they have to go <laughs> I had that before Felix <laughs> so yeah. I feel I feel often men in my life would be sort of a doula. I really do. I have encountered uh, many, uh, no, many, I, many. <laughs> I <don't know. laughs> <Talk about that. laughs> but, but from the men I meet in my life, also as friends, I I I I encounter them always as um, having this, showing me something or, um, yeah, having birthing me into something um, or in a way being very kind and so yeah I feel I feel like it like this in my life but I think everybody is everybody gives us something everybody every yeah. everything every being every non-being every encounter mm -hmm. can teach us something isn't it or, or resonate with us and can be in that connection those gifts yeah mm. yeah that's that's what i also believe um for me it's it's this kind of magic um um maybe life is like like a book and every encounter is you know uh, it's not starting with the end of the page it's just wherever you are there is constant communication between everything um, that you're opening up to or not let's say um, since some some years as well like maybe two years I started um, to be very becoming very interesting in how does the day feel or the evening like how is this day and from the outside so how is the day then how is my day does this outside reflect you know like on my day or 
and then I would also encounter that me, myself and I, <laughs> I feel every day differently also and even from one moment to another so um yeah this relation between the outer and and the inner nature became uh, more more and more relevant and so i believe that there's a constant communication even if i would have now as we speak together and it might be that in two days something corresponds to that so it's the whole time like this or even I end a conversation and then I go somewhere and then it, the, the topic continues, not with the same person maybe, or, but, and if, and then in the night you have the dream. So it's, it can be, you know, I, it's constantly, constantly. And I, I really, um, I really like this to, to read the information and also to, to relate with people who are doing the same about time qualities and then relate to this. And then even the details, because the details can also tell you so much, is everything in line or or not, or what wants to be seen, what's a bit hidden, mm. things like that. That's yeah. In tension that you're living, but also the attention. And, um, and it takes, does it take energy? like or gives you energy or it's just that's the way of your own being like i feel that's me i feel that i just can sit and just <laughs> kind of be with it it's um and this kind of quality i really feel that it's coming also as a gift that i i would love to that this um this way of being just, you know, just can be, even if somebody might not see it or not be aware of it, but that it would have also the same recognition than maybe other values we have in our time, like being productive or whatever, everything. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That there are people who are really, I mean, it doesn't mean that I'm calm all the time. It's not that I'm only meditation or it's not even meditation but it it really gives me peace and I feel also my heart now that um, I, I reconnect with my heart just being aware being aware of where I am what's the time the moment because and then you realize that everything is changing the whole time I mean the sky the bird nothing it's not even it's not an image it's it's the whole time and but being with that is just very ah, oh, comforting. Oh, so then I feel this is also becoming a home, um, connecting with the moment. Like this is part of me because I'm very uh, my element is very much air as well. So then uh, I'm feeling like yeah, I'm just in tune with what is, and this is what I also provide then when I'm in a circle or somewhere that um, or with people that I would just say what I perceived to 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 bring it from maybe the unseen because the air might not be so visible but then from from this uh, bringing it into the language um, that we speak and um, allowing it to become something that then people will relate because there are a lot of layers in the atmosphere and i i would say that you know there are people who <laughs> who would uh discover the the layers of a stone or something so how old is this and stuff like this but my material is what's what's in the air or maybe what's what's here and then if i make i feel that i can make this available like it can be feelings or it can be feeling heavy like in in circle of people and and then i provide this and then it's it's also an maybe an earthwork you know like that's my material like providing it and then people like they will relate to and very often yeah i have i have been developing this this instrument during this time and i feel that now more and more i can also put it into service it actually serves and people yes i was feeling this 
and now there's a name for it and it, i feel a lot of time this moment maybe of breath and air just gives us the, gives us this pause like yeah not running 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 but what is now where are we now and um can be a relief to just be in the now <laughs> You're so present. I think this is this is a beautiful uh, sensitivity, you know, that you and then so you really are a very present person, and you can even feel that. And I just actually I love that the image of this earth, and I'm, I'm wondering if you're like aerating the earth, you know, you put and you know to make it uh, the softness and the and and the strength. I'm you know when they tilt the ground and they you know the farmers till the air and sort of make the circulate. So I think that's what you do with people. Yeah yeah that's that's what i do actually <laughs> you do yeah right uh and the and the movement and also sort of yeah and this ear sort of yes coming out of see seeing the bigger picture or the expansiveness or but also allowing feelings you know allowing what emerges how did you like in, in I mean, you talk about your thirties, but how did you, in terms of growing up, you know, cultivate that or see that? I mean, it's in many respects there'll be a where sensitivity in a child at some point is quite difficult. You know, it's like what to do with it, or you know, society's like, come on, you need to be. <laughs> you need to be there that you want to share, just in terms of stepping into that. Well, self acceptance and love, and you know, your gifts where you. Like you really do step into your own gifts. As far from my understanding at this moment right now, um, well, I believe every, every baby probably has a lot of sensibility. We come like this. And then one of the reasons I would also be very attracted to to finding out more about birth and being pregnant and everything is, um, there's this first landing. We land in the earth, in the in the belly of the mother. It's it's like going into earth and then coming out again. And um, during this time, a lot of things can happen already that will form you. Birth is one of the biggest um, imprints we have and which can define uh, certain patterns later so um, I believe I made some inner journeys as well about this topic but um, I would say that um, I, I, I don't know if I have been this sensible all the time or that I could discover it for my own when I was a little child when I see pictures of myself <laughs> as a child I would look very, very serious, very serious, like watching what's going on here. <laughs> Maybe <laughs> this is something that I have been doing all the time and that I am still doing. I'm still figuring out what is, what's going on here. <laughs> what's going on here? Very good question. Um, but in a way, I feel that... Um, where in the family I have been born in, there was not this um, this space to really, or this empathy to really um, feel supported in this sensibility, let's say it like that. And, uh, or yeah, this space and so, um, still, yeah, what surprises me is, or not surprises, but what I now find out about everything is that um, um, when the time comes, there will be the right time to that a flower or a plant or a human, because it's it has been in my case just okay. Now is the time I'm I'm coming out again. So this is this is what happened. Maybe I had to hide back a lot of who I was in order to survive, which I did and um yeah i sort of it's very interesting like in terms of when you try to find out or about your family um 
your ancestry. Um, we always like want to continue in a way. So maybe that's what I did. I, I came there and to find out what is there, even if it was a, a really tough um, lesson in a way. Um, and now I, I, I feel that I landed again, you know, like um, coming out of the, of smaller ways to, to express myself and being a bit um, inside. And now I'm coming out more and more. Now, for me, it's actually, I discovered, I mean, I met this reunion with my father and everything maybe that there are things that, that it just comes with the time. That's very interesting to see that things are just coming with the time as well. And then it's the time for that. And then it's the time for that, of course, because you feel more grounded and then you feel more safe and then you just come out. And then go in. I love that metaphor of the, you know, just the season of the flower, you know, yeah, bursting out and then going in, you know, and then just like, to, and just respecting that time. That's a beautiful reflection. I, um, I listened to a podcast recently, Charles Eisenstein, um, mm -hmm. you and the ancient podcast. Have you tuned into that? Not yet. Mm -hmm. You and nature, it's called, right? Yeah. And um, he talks about, um, he had a guest and I don't know her name. I'll put it in the, in the episode. Notes. She has super wellness. Anyway, she talks about this. She didn't want to be a, she chose her and her partner decided not to have children because um, of, you know, climate change and just, you know, it's a sort of a, okay. and anyway, but she, um, through her, through her dreams and she got messages from a, she could see this little boy saying, you know, um, I'm ready to, for you, I want you to be my parents. And she had that. And even the, the husband, the husband had that, those same sort of dreams and sort of, and anyway, and so she, she gave birth to this, to this boy and mm -hmm. she, she, he's five years old now, and she he tells her about um, about watching her, she, like being up in the universe, and watch. She said he can describe their house um, that they lived in before he was born, and he goes, "There's a whole lot of souls waiting there mm -hmm. to 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 um, to come into Earth, you know, for to heighten consciousness." And also, but also to feel that earthling, you know, to be connected. I just thought that was just, I mean, honestly, it's so beautiful. And I just think of these, yeah, these souls waiting to come in and that we choose, you know, we choose as parents for some reason. Yeah. That's interesting. I'm, um, I believe that the connection we have to our earth is very much related to the connection we will have with our mother in the first place and also with our father and uh, family. Um, so what's the gesture? Are we inviting the new being? Like whenever you're ready, you can come because I have heard that a lot of souls might also be afraid to, to actually come. They are afraid. So what will be the gesture you invited with an open arm and like, you can come, we are here. And, or we are also afraid or we, we don't even think about it. Like, um, are we connected to the, our wishes? We all, you know, come from the stars in a way because um, we reach out and we wish for something maybe. Um, People wish for something or they get a message and, and then and then how's the landing? I mean, we land, we really land and then like, it's amazing. And during this time of being in bulk in the belly, um, how's this time? Um, how is the relation then between the mother and the child and the people? very much around um this was something that was most important for me during also this sober stula time i believe because i believe it's so very important because of my own story but also yeah i believe this is kind of the start as well it's it's our start 
um, and and then the birth itself, I um, researched or um, how how is birth? Um, how do we live birth still? How do we acknowledge mothers in society? Um, is do we still as humans believe in that it's actually something that's very naturally and that we allow it to to be naturally and that we just only try to support or intervene if it's if there's no other way because now we have certain possibilities so this is this landing but i also understand from my story that of my life story that there can be phases where you land, you incarnate, and then you land again, and then some time later you land even more. That because maybe it also has to be this way. Because I also heard another story of a very high sense sensitive um, person, and with all who you are, maybe you couldn't just yet incarnate. But there must be not one or the other explanation because, and it must not be that a natural birth is the only way to have a happy life later. Um, but that's part of the story. That's that's part of who we become. Like, how do we evolve? What do we bring with us? And find our medicine and a lot of things. So, yeah. Yes, so true. So true. What, what, why did you go into being a doula? What was that, that that was the, you know, the, your path, the, the mechanism to, to help people come into the world and, you know, your gifts of that? <laughs> I, I remember that it was at the time and it, it, it happens quite sometimes in my life that it's not really like, oh, I want to do this and then I do that. <laughs> no. <laughs> it's more like I'm getting kind of um, like mm, I want something to happen in my life, mm, but I don't know yet how. And then I open myself up and then things come. And in a way, it was like this, that I got this connection. Um, I saw a video with uh, the teacher uh, from the women's school and who offered uh, the formation. And, and then I'm just going forward to it. I I don't know a lot of times like why, but maybe I already have been listening like the certain impulse and I would study a lot, but I, I would also then quit. I, I wouldn't uh, go on this path in the last year because there were other things then. And I was it was too vague for me. Do I really want to be a doula? I feel that I am kind of a doula as well, but maybe more in transformation processes with people. But... In the first place, I felt like when I would watch the videos and everything, I feel like that this was for me, like I needed someone to talk about the world of birth that was the way that my heart and my soul longed for. So I took a lot of this to nourish uh, myself and of course to understand a lot of, but it just, this was um, soul food, <laughs> soul food. <laughs> And uh, yeah. in a way, yeah, this is how this is how I came to it. And then, of course, I would discover more certain points where I would relate to. Why would I react on certain topics in the world of? Um, it was a search for for myself as well. It um, and still, I believe that if just everyone could un. Um, get to know the world of birth let's say or also dead in a way with so much love that has been um, offered to me and not only in a book or something very abstract in 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 this school we would just be only amazed <laughs> only amazed and that's so, that's so beautiful that's so fundamental those fundamentals of rebirth and death isn't it like if we really and you know iterated that you know really sort of understood and felt that how much you know deeper understanding of ourselves 
each other and in the earth no it's yeah really and beautiful. and i believe that our connection with the mother or even it has a lot to do uh, with how we can connect as well to ourselves and then to mother earth the, the bigger mother i believe there is a very strong connection between that in a way not saying oh first you have to do this and then that but there is a connection what have you noticed with that connection for yourself um i feel that nourish nourishing myself has become something and being responsible to nourish myself um this has been something that i found out um maybe i wanted still the world to nourish me in a way like yeah just you know but i'm stepping at the moment it feels more like um i believe that being a mother or being being a woman in all the aspects there are so many archetypes the archetype of the mother um has to do with me of take versorgen in german um giving what is needed right, right? Uh, providing maybe providing and so i try to be this mother for myself as well like providing uh, understanding who i am and at the same time now providing so what is it and taking care and okay no maybe this is too fast no maybe for this you need more time okay and being patient and all these things to really yeah maybe not wanting it someone else to be in a way but going more with the perspective to myself and understanding myself and then um providing this this is the moment where i am so oh. uh, yeah <laughs> i you know the yeah the mother mothering ourselves all of us mothering ourselves and in order to be there to 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 mother others or to nurture others and yeah it's fundamental and i suppose even more important you know you've noticed that in these covid times but just even what you were sharing before we talked about you and for valentines you know like what both of you needed individually mm -hmm. yesterday you know like yes which it takes takes you know like what do i need in order to be yeah yeah be being is very very important for me um just con being contemplative com complementative <laughs> like yeah. um really being in the moment not having to not this or that no and and just being and then combining this with the movement okay where i want to go <laughs> or then pulses like um yeah and uh this year i started to accompany also a little group i had this inner um vision that mm, yeah what is our relation with the earth and um you know through my work i'm with uh, people from all over the world who are doing a a year of um a voluntary a year of social service in germany so we would always gather so through the years i'm doing it for 11 years now but lately only in the late four to five years i'm doing it with people from everywhere in the world so um of course a lot of them are still in germany but some they go back and so i had this idea and i also know people from a lot of places in the world we could all Uh, go over the threshold and on the place where we are and then find out what's and just listening to the to the earth so i started this with a little group of two women in brazil and another um man in, in germany and me and it was good that we had this intimate group and then we would do together going over the threshold and then coming back and it was a very basic version of the vision quest so I was in my garden and two times I would hear sounds of two different women, very loud and not very um, sympathetic. But that my my focus was on, on the, we have 
it's not trees it's it's small they are smaller like bushes but of course it's winter and there was only water drops there and they were just standing still and without doing no pose nothing no um yelling they had this strength it was their strength of silence in the knowing that they develop that now they get water and then when the time has come you know like you can see things but the whole time they were just there and it was beautiful and it felt right and it felt powerful because you couldn't just um see something else you i would just see them and admiring them because of this you know like they became all my focus and attraction because they were so in their own like you know i'm i'm just here yeah. dude i'm being i'm just being that's what they told me about my relation to the earth and that's oh. something i like yeah i like it very much okay yeah he shivers up and literally what a beautiful mirroring back and confirmation and i also love that you this because community is so important for you and you're such a i mean you're multilingual you're traveled the world you work internationally with so many people like also having this you know this deep conversation inviting people in that space to have that conversation what mm -hmm. have you noticed about you know explicitly having that conversation inviting people to have that conversation recently it's a bit different because um the people usually they do it for a year or one and a half but now with all this time a lot of people choose and they can to stay like two years now in germany and doing social work and the topics of when you go abroad and you're you're it's another landing so that's what i'm studying the whole time <laughs> you know i'm these people land here for a year in a place where they have to orientate themselves where they are and who they are and how they can make sure or just you know going over a threshold it's it's just this coming to okay where i am here and usually there are all these these demons of feeling alone or without my family or not not having this feeling of belonging and with this special time of the last year and now these topics are they feel more heavy now um really people feeling lonesome or people who might already have had um, difficult experiences in their life feeling that they would get enter in with the pressure into more crisis like I mean, it's in for me. It feels like incarnation, but individually, still, uh, it's it's not always feeling comfortable to like incarnate more. But that would what's something that I realized that um, yeah, a lot of these questions like who am I and normal questions that you would always do or where do i want to go what would I, do i want to do after it maybe um they become more essential like more existential in a way something like that yeah yeah these are students aren't they are they about sort of students that come to volunteer or um they are from all ages uh, from 18 to I already had a teacher. She she is was uh, sixty two, um, and they come from all. Some have studied already, maybe even German as a foreign language, and others they are just eighteen and leave home for the first time. And yeah, mm -hmm. everything. And some have it very clear what they want, uh, or that they might uh, also like to have a perspective, a better perspective in their life. Be continuing in germany and others are just the very normal i would say like okay or there can be different motivation i'm here and let's see what's happening or it it will enroll during time um finding the the red the red line so yeah. this is a very 
also a, a doula process because you on their way like standing there and I, I when I kind of um, thought about okay what we will talk about then I find out actually I was studying a lot of um, human nature yes <laughs> that's that's what I do like and all the, of course we are always mirrors for each other as well but that's that's what I what I do what I did <laughs> well that's what you yeah that yeah that's what you do that's what you do <laughs> um but there's really yeah it's a really lovely doula process of wherever whatever age you know and helping people literally land and reconnect reincarnate and the, the next phase and holding that beautiful yeah a, i believe that i believe that what we do always brings us to who we are and then it can be the other way around but yeah. you teach most what you need most yeah, exactly. in that sense right like uh -huh, what what are I inviting into my life and then aha uh -huh, so where's the part of me that that's that's I always I also have this feeling of we are so much and for me it's also like bringing it like uh, this belongs to me and this and this and because there's so many things that form a part of us actually we might not even have the time <laughs> to but that's what I do reconnecting like yeah 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 this our, our potential is un, you know unlimited and it's like and what are we choosing in this sort of human body in this moment in this time or this yeah right now there's a lot yeah well once again i think i mean actually i think i've said this before on the it revealed this and it was at the living and dying wanting my my intention was to be intimately expansive and I think that that's sort of something, even just this image of your, your, you know, up here, that, you know, how do we do that? You know, it's the sky and the earth or the, you know, how do we ground um, and what in this moment? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes, um, this year I did a meditation about what energies will come into this year because every time I'm getting more interested in into this and um yes i also started to be part of a circle now with uh, spanish women spanish speaking women um that each full moon we connect and that we also will have a guidance through what the moon says in this time so i feel like Of course, we humans, like every part, like the trees, like everyone, we, but the trees, they are also doing this. That's, that's, that's what I like about the trees that, you know, no matter what, I mean, that's their nature. But, but recently also in, in winter, I had this feeling that I also just wanted to be like them, you know, like this. And then let's see what's happening. I, I liked it so much. I like I love trees. I love your trees. Uh, and actually for listeners, Maria is extending her arms and just sort of, yeah, just <laughs> trying to be a tree and embody a tree. That's a beautiful movement, like every day if we just held that. Yeah. And so we are, of course, also um, through us, um, I don't know, the cosmic air comes and... I don't know yet how, how this all works, but I feel like, you know, sometimes you are just still or you're doing something, washing the dishes and then pop, something pops up in your uh, consciousness. So seems like the, the air is uh, dragged with information, right? <laughs> so we are, what I wanted to say is that we are, of course, kind of channels, like, um, and that's the part of the listening, like, um, and it must not be that everyone is like that or, wants to be like that or whatever but I really feel that when I did this um inner vision this year that I encountered myself like being very on the ground maybe near the water and there are these flowers and uh feeling having a long 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 connection to um the cosmos that's that's uh, was a very comfortable um image for me Actually, this is what I believe. Like, I mean, isn't it quite tumultuously to to be on on a planet that move, is moving the whole time? I mean, we 
we feel like no it's standing still but actually i'm, I'm just journeying I'm, I'm, i feel like being in this calm and soft place but feeling connected to something that is seems to be very far away but having this connection is something that i i really like like just to just be that and being human as well but also i feel like my nature might also be this that i i like to what i mentioned before like being there and <laughs> riding the cosmic waves but in a very calm and protected um way I, I didn't see this but it was very it was a very um cozy place yeah i love that you said comforting you know that's really beautiful you know like so secure in your own being of that there's a futurist i love her she said um cosmic love we need what our job is to bring cosmic love down to our toes and i think that you know if we can I think there are people that are really like yourselves are really in touch with that and i think i think in terms of our own practice like i'm very i'm increasingly going into like either the manifestation or the the idea of that like what is myself in the cosmos you know and really really trying to feel that that part of it rather than I've been usually in terms of a meditation of either the focus or just seeing the changing sensations. But I actually mm. want to, going back to your probably your your wolf howl, you know, the sort of the manifesting of what's possible, you know, what's the next energetic level and really trying to step into that of, rather than about matter, the energy. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> I like it that I believe after we will have spoken, then then my mind will say, oh, you could have said this or that, you know, like, but now I feel it is emerging, you know, like um, I, I'm, I'm really looking forward to, to read then the lesson after we have spoken and we might hear it again. Like, what's the echo of our conversation? I also like this. I love because, it. Yeah. yeah, because... Mm. There is this there is this one metaphor that I really like. When you when you run and then you make a, a salto. Yes. Uh, and then you land again. For example, I have been accompanying people who are doing this kind of salto. They go to another land as well, as a from Germany to another land, and then they do their voluntary service there and then they come back. It's a different experience because Germans usually come back because they already live in a privileged um, country um more privileged so sometimes they would see we have this big preparation seminar 10 days and then they go like oh and this is it now the i start to spring mm. but i heard from a dancer that when we spring and then after we land it is only in the landing that we realize the movement that we just made because then the movement the memory of the movement comes into our body so oh, yeah, yeah right. I like very much oh, yeah. and you know in german in german the 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 origin is called ursprung and it it has inside of self a, a springen as a to spring so um i really like that because um i feel in my own life that having make having made a certain sprung uh, to spring and then land again um i can uh, relate or discover my origin as well aha this is where i'm from but now after the after having you know when you have achieved something and you know okay uh, this was it not when you're in the middle of it <laughs> maybe but then yeah. after yeah yeah we can what is it we can only live uh we can only understand life backwards but we have to live it forwards or but i also it's thinking going back to your ear so the let um the ear is you know you need ear you know you need to do the spring you need to leave the ground <laughs> and then the yeah. earth, you know we need to land i love this landing actually um susan hegele hegele um who i interviewed and she talked about this um she mentioned not on the podcast but um our, we do a solo together um, here and mm -hmm. 
and she said about the um, Uruguayan saying of um, as in terms of our souls, you know, our souls need to land. Like we do so much international travel, <laughs> I mean, mm -hmm. and actually our soul has been sort of left behind. I mean, in order to really land, isn't it? Mm -hmm. She's sort of really been really mindful of that. I'm really mindful of now how and I'm just sort of thinking pre-COVID about how much travel I did and yeah, how much I I, I may have landed in, in one sense, but how did I really land and, and be really present with people? Mm -hmm. Sort of questioning that. Mm. I like that landing has something to something to do with our feet as well. Like usually we land on our feet. <laughs> it's all okay usually we do don't we it's <laughs> it's all okay yeah a nice reminder of that it feels really empowering mm. oh, dear. but i also realized you know i was also the one traveling a lot um or let's say moving around a lot like but in the other world um and Sometimes I imagine myself having, you know, if somebody would watch to the earth and then, or let's say where I move, like I would have a red light and then maybe I was painting a painting, you know, with my movements, like the whole time. Okay, this information and that, and from that place, you know, maybe it has a cosmic, it's cosmic language I was doing because I, I don't know, I tried to get, make sense out of it. <laughs> oh, that's a lovely image too. Beautiful. Uh, and I love also, you know, when you said about what's the echo after this conversation, and yeah, that's interesting too, isn't it? <laughs> and then we then we could have another talk, and then you know, <laughs> like <laughs> it's constant. You know, we haven't done that, but that sort of format before. I wonder if we could, yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm just saying, you know, I don't know, I. Um, I feel like I, I like this also about conversation. If the conversation, you know, conversation actually is like there is this model also, which I like. Let's say we do not expect something to happen and we're just there and we are open. So I start, I say something and then it reminds you of and then you respond to that, making the question. And and this reminds me of something. and. During then this conversation, we, I believe, if if this also has a certain space and allowance to happen, we just go where we 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 wouldn't have known before. We just go where, yeah, where I don't know if it's supposed to be, but we just come to what we are actually talking about, you know, like <laughs> encountering well, what is it we're actually talking about. So yeah, and this yeah. this um movement i don't know if it if it ever ends you know it's isn't isn't it maybe that's what i'm thinking in this moment maybe it's just the con constant like like the days and the nights and every movement like con, a constant conversation yeah, just and we tune in sometimes and we just flow and it's because <laughs> I, it's been a nice um exploration because i start with you know earth converse like i said it's earth converse, but quite often it's sort of like an either, it has started off an interview, but I love the idea of the conversation. And I also know there's some people have got feedback like, um, you know, you need to tell where the listeners go. And I just go, I don't really want to do that. <laughs> because part of it is like, how do we listen? Can we, you know, like, do, where's this conversation going? What do I need to know? What What is about, you know, what's the backstory? And it's like, I think it's these podcasts or, you know, or just listening into a conversation is how we as a listener, you know, what are we, yeah. yeah, how present are we? Can we just sort of really tune in and, and not expect or not control? Or I think it's really interesting. Yes. And I, I also, I also feel, you know, we can listen also with, with different instruments, of course, we are listening to each other through the words, but I feel that my heart, for example, there is a deeper space in me that's also listening the whole time. So it, because I have been observing that through the conversation, because I'm also like, 
um, trying to be as comfy as I can, but still I'm trying, you know, respond. Of course, these kind of things are there. So I'm yeah. one the other time I'm relaxing again because I know it's we're just going there and I also like to enjoy it. And so I realize now also that we're talking about it that something deeper in me is also listening. And so maybe, or you ask something and I respond from somewhere in me that it can even be that in the first moment, it's, it doesn't seem to have something to do with the question, but still there's something deeper, maybe my soul listening, aha, and, and connecting from another place what what is this what we are doing right now and giving answer answers as well and this this works other ways i have been trying to find out also a bit about this about the speaking language and, and everything but also the the soul language or that's what i'm also doing where is the other person or where am i first i did it with where's the other person like also from my story like where's the other person what do i have to take care of but then also to me where am i and taking care of and then um yes um i realized that there is this kind of deeper connection which is not working this way it, it it's not working this it comes more um from the belly from yeah, it has and it can be very very um fast as well like mm -hmm. hugging someone and saying a thing that i haven't thought before but just came through the understanding of the situation something like that intuition so i feel like we are opening up the energy you know for again the light for what wants to emerge in this conversation being humans as well you and me and um having an idea or not about what's going on or liking the flow but also feeling like oh Oh, I'm not I'm not only relaxed because I you know yeah but, then, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but that's yeah that's the diet yeah and just but also noticing that like as long as yeah. we're we're sort of aware of that yeah yeah that extra element I do you know what I mean and maybe here's I'm gonna go yeah from the from the sky to the earth like you know like those skills like I a lot of it for the Earth Converse podcast or that I want to, you know, mainstream these conversations. I mean, we're all comfortable, you know, the living and dying group, you know, it's such a natural home. And But to have these in the corporate world or the organisational world, like, you know, to have dialogue, you know, where, you know, you would be great at that, to let that emergence because, you know, any board meeting, you're trading opinions. It feels like ping pong, you know? And it's, yes, no, right, wrong. And it's not going into something more emergent and, you know, and yeah. What it's is usually it? way too fast for me. <laughs> I cannot really connect if, if it goes that way. Ping pong, like. <laughs> yeah. Well, nobody can. <laughs> but people do. Yeah. They do. And I don't know how they do. That's why I'm always asking, are you fine? Or I don't know, Lila, like, <laughs> let's. <laughs> Let's check out and then we can talk about. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. That space, you know, something nurturing, you know, like how do we best nurture the, the dialogue, this conversation? I also like this word enjoying like really enjoy yourself bring yourself into joy so what is it today <laughs> working with I um, Bijan he's um, he's a healer here on the island and he works a lot with these he coaches creates this woman's immune circle that we're in and uh, and it's you know it's all about joy and peace and pleasure and just really you know if we have that intention um, it's yeah you know, so powerful mm. well we started like you know i mean i think that of creation 
creation, you know, you know was mostly a joyous experience. Mm. Yeah. So I'm also discovering and I am in this way um, of from the place of joy and from the way of the place of where I am now um, sharing. I think as I have been in a lot of worlds, I'm also like combining the worlds or and building bridges between people, between information, you know. Um, um, and as our structures in the world dissolve and uh, new ways are coming, I also feel that um, I'd like to take part in this uh, more from a place and from a place of offering something where I am very comfortable, where I am. And with what I know, it's 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 that, and there is way more uh, than sometimes I might imagine, which I have to can offer already, you know, apart from what I have been doing and stuff. But I feel it's it's there. So this is how I created my little Instagram, my my new baby because I feel at the moment it's also time to for me right now to um, follow my impulses and there are like little small flowers like little small plants right now and I I'm 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 providing the earth you know for things to grow and it's a very soft and process so um yeah I I um I, I feel like I'm always getting the information right now for what is, as I said before, what is ready to to be spoken or li lived out yet. And I go with that organically. And now I felt it's time to, to show myself more to the world. And I <laughs> loved it because I was like, I'd like to do a podcast. And then the other day, it was just the other day that you asked me. It was, <laughs> it was you know, like, it was there. <laughs> Oh, I, love that. I was saying a message to a friend he's also a colleague on on uh, on the chat and she was like oh maria i could listen to your philosophy like for a, in a podcast and i was like yeah I'll see, yeah let's do a podcast you know i would like to do it and then the other day you would ask me so mm -hmm. oh i love that synchronicity yes but you have so many gifts to share and i think it's sort of like kind of it is sort of a the stereotype even even your you know the german cuban you know like i mean even that mix is like a gift to the world you know um and i think that because you you combine this sort of either the the structure of the yeah literally the earth and the sky you know it's the intuition and the logic and it's the flow you know and um the holding you know it is just a such a gift to the world and even when you said about 29, that seemed to be a significant year, 39, you know, there's something, there's this threshold into the next decade. And I, I love that you're just this, yeah, the next rebirthing of you and stepping into this and, you know, the world hearing your voice and yeah. seeing your gifts, really, Maria. Mm. Yeah, it's, it's all there, I feel. And uh, still it takes like one step after the other. Yes, and now it's like I'm showing I will do also some um, I have invited people that I have been accompanying through in the last years to give a little statement to reflect how they felt with me being someone who accompanied them. So I will not talk myself. I let them talk to be seen through their perspective and to also, OK, this is if you meet me, this is. Um, what I do or what I am so this was something that brought me so much joy like yeah like of course you can do this very professionally and uh, people do it and they do a seminar and then they have the testimonials and Felix would ask me yeah but don't you want to do something and then afterwards the but I feel like I have been doing so much and maybe I haven't really shared with a lot of people what it is because I got feedback but but now it's it's more like I, I, I'm, I'm showing it, that's who I am, 
and then I feel then it's providing again the earth for what comes next uh -huh, then what what comes next because first I'm there you know and then I feel like things are just coming after that I don't know them sometimes I was concerned like I should know but I feel like no for me it's going fine this way at the moment and I really like that it's really mm. very lovely another podcast now everyone will know me in the world we are spreading this podcast <laughs> Great, great what so if you wrote if you offered yourself your own testimonial what would it be Ooh. um i've been thinking of that um she invites you to see you and only you the way you are and what are your deepest wishes and yeah um, she's that clear and empowering mirror um, of of your soul and where it wants to go to da -da. Da -da. <laughs> Oh, yes. Yes. Yes, you are. Yes, you are. To start with that. <laughs> well, on that note, darling Maria, we'll just pause there. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much for sharing your gifts. And I'm, if you want the world to know more about you and feel you. Mm. Yeah, I enjoyed it and I really loved it that you um, interviewed me. I very much love it, Penelope. Thank you so much for inviting me. Such a pleasure. Pause here and see you back for the next Earth to Earth podcast. In the meantime, go and enjoy your day, one conversation at a time.